You are now entering the LuxCore Studios. And you've secured a seat for the Protecting Your Radius podcast. Here, Here, we build connections from your contracting profession to some of the top bleeding edge products and services. Don't get deterred. Let's not delay. Here is your host, Nathan Downs. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Protecting Your Radius podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Downs. And on today's episode, we have Matt Warner. Matt, what's going on, buddy? Oh, just uh, hanging out here in Michigan with you. Absolutely. Matt Warner is the owner of My Salesman, Empire Fence and Netting, um, Unlimited uh, Unlimited Sports 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 Solutions, Solutions. and ESC, which is our fab shop that we make a lot of our foul poles and stuff like that, dugouts for USS. And then uh, we have The Wave, which is an uh, indoor uh, baseball softball facility. And oh, and then we have an access control division that we recently started. So. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Yeah, very awesome. The wave. So when do we do an Operation Epic too? Oh my goodness, we should. <laughs> we need to. You know what? I've I've had a few people. If enough people harass me about it, I'll probably yeah, do it. Actually, that's yeah, awesome. I loved it. It was that was a good time. That's awesome. Especially when that storm rolled in, because oh. that's business, right? Yes. One day you're sweating and going yeah. crazy. The next day, a, co- a cold front comes through and a big old storm. Yeah. I mean, that's that was just, unbelievable. That's business 101. Yeah. That was that was awesome. There's a video floating around of that somewhere. We'll need to find it and edit it in while we're talking <laughs> it about it. Flying everywhere. Bottom. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> the microburst tornado that hit us while we're all there. It was funny. Um, so I wanted to talk to Matt today, specifically Matt, wanted to bring you on. We've been having a couple conversations over the past few days yep. and there's some key things that we were both learning together yes. and, um, there was a quote that someone said yesterday. Yeah, it was amazing. I've, I've never heard it before and it really hit home with me. I, you know, I, I'm passionate about culture and by all means, I don't have it figured out at all, but I'm, I'm working really hard on it and we're constantly tweaking everything. But um, this this uh, business owner, fence owner, he had said uh, that their philosophy is to get the horse to run for the rider and not the whip. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that's that's culture today. And I, I that hit home with me, you know, does the horse run for the rider or the whip? <laughs> Meaning... Do your people really care about you and the company or are you just browbeating them and scaring them to death and right. trying to get them to run for the whip? Uh, so that one, that hit home with me yesterday. And then, then they were talking about that they do a one-on-one uh, where their leaders um, once a week will meet with somebody in the company and then they have a, like five things that they try to me, he's going to email me those five things. But one of them that hit home with me is they do uh, what they call dream building. Mm-hmm. And apparently there's a book out there called Dream Builders. The Dream Builder, yeah. Um, and uh, I think Justin Bennett was going to get us the name and the title of that that he just read. But nice. it talks about how if you can help your people meet some of their goals or dreams in life, that's that's the way to help your turnover. Yeah, and that's one thing that we noticed. Uh, I've been reading a lot about this recently was with uh, millennials. Like you're talking like generationally, right? You know, when we mentioned the thing about the whip and the, um, you know, or the rider, like, you know, every generation's different, right? Right. I think they mentioned that, that there were so many, <clears throat> well, we're all motivated by different things, right? Right. And, and, you know, my grandfather, he was motivated because he went to the Korean war and he said, he saw things that he never wanted to happen in America and that uh, with the food lines and all that. And he said, I never wanted my kids to go through that. Mm-hmm. Well, then what happens then is they spoil their kids a little bit, <laughs> right? Right. So then my dad becomes a little bit spoiled, but then he was motivated um, differently than my grandfather. But, <clears throat> but in the same sense, and then I was mom motivated to give my kids what, what we can and make sure they can sure. have a college education and, Think weird things like that, but but uh, we're all motivated by a little bit of something different. But we keep spoiling that next generation, and that's a little bit of where we're at now. But I will tell you that these uh, this generation of workers, I really think that they're passionate about doing good work. Yeah, 
and and riding for the brand yeah. uh, differently than than my generation. My generation, I feel like. Uh, well, how old are you? I'm forty. So I'm the so, so I'm you, in between right at the end of it. I'm yeah. the zenial, you know. Yes, the, yeah, yeah, there yeah. You go. We are, and, and it is true. We are a pocket of time in between the Gen X and the millennials that r- know how to flow both ways. So it's really unique. Like if you're 39 to 44, okay. is what they say. Like our <clears throat> our group is a microcosm between the two generations. But as you were saying that, that's true. Like I found millennials, so the under 40s right now are super passionate about like what like what am i doing that is part of the greater good like right. what i do has to matter right and what's funny is i have that in me too but i'm also the gen x and i'm like don't care how you feel you Let's know like go. Uh, yeah, like, yeah we got yeah. we got to get stuff done so it's really weird because i can feel like i can literally empathize both ways and that's not normal but the, but it's true the under 40s right now you know, you guys are out there looking for, you want to be part of a bigger thing. That's one of the reasons, Matt, that all this stuff is taken off like it is, you know, the podcasting, the social media things and all these things, because they want that connection. They want that, that feel to be part of something bigger than themselves. I, and I, I like that. I mean, I, I like riding for the brand, you know, being a farm kid uh, on the ranch, you know, I, I like the, the whole culture of we're one unit, we're a team, we're a gang, we're, yeah. we're all together, we're going to do this together. And I, I believe at Empire, that's, that's the feeling that we've got going through it. And I've had a lot of people that have walked through our halls and say, holy cow, this, you guys are really a tight knit group, you're, you're a family, which can also backfire a little bit because somebody new comes into that and now they got to try to break into that group. group. And uh, so that gets to be a little bit tough, but how do you find that balance? Or if somebody doesn't quite fit in, but you need them because they bring a talent that nobody else brings, that's that's a tough, but um, yeah, I I agree. My generation was motivated by money, right? If, if if, If you dangled a carrot of a promotion in front of Anybody in my generation, they're gonna they're gonna try to chase that, right? That's just a thing of the past. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, I heard Jim Rohn uh, one time say, uh, "Money isn't everything, but it's near to oxygen." Right. I mean, you have to have <laughs> right. it, right. and we need to make right. it to survive. And sure, uh, you know, the last three days we've been we've been hanging out with uh, some guys that uh, have really scaled their companies. They're yeah. very, very large entrepreneurs. Um, I call them entrepreneurs because uh, almost everyone that we've met with in the last three days has more than just fence. I mean, yeah. a yeah. Porta Johns or a, a different kind of division or the one, uh, the one fence company also does striping um, uh, century. Uh, oh, they, okay. they do striping also. Wow. So uh, there's there's a lot going on, and we are literally in the hallway. <laughs> where I'm like, I know yeah. it's like, I was like, well, wow, there's a crowd of people coming through, but uh, so the sounds going to be real we, interesting we, here. We, we made our own makeshift <laughs> yeah. uh, studio. Here. We moved some stuff around. Yeah, I made a studio out in the middle of the hallway. So that's fun. That's fun. Well, um, as we were going through Matt, as we were going through and talking about some of the especially with people that have scaled their businesses to that yeah. degree and stuff. Um, there was a couple nuances that I noticed with watching how people reacted to things in real time, thinking back to what, what, how did they get to that scale? Cause in this group here where we're at right now, like I like, especially for me, so I'll put myself like, let everybody in my shoes. Mm-hmm. I'm the smallest fish in the big pond, right? Like, Um, which is cool because I can see the future and be like, well, I know I belong with these cats, but I'm not anywhere close to that. But you said something to us yesterday, um, as we were going through and thinking about the growth, like, how do you really grow and how do you go on? And you said, always say yes. For over 30 years, Southwest Automated Security has been the premier provider of gate operators, access controls, CCTV, and so much more. Visit southwestautomated.com today, taking dealers to the next level. And so I wanted to like wrap this conversation back around that because I think there's so many people out there right now, especially in social media, that are talking about, you know, when we say no and stuff. 
And, and I, I, I understand that. And sure. And it's easy to watch. Like Mark Olson had that uh, video the other day. I don't think you've seen it yet. The bucket video. I have not, but I've heard it's like really, three or four people tell me. And it's really powerful and really good because especially as a young entrepreneur or a young fence company owner, like I understand, like I'm like a hundred percent on board with what Mark's saying, but you then challenged me after we were talking about that um, with this other concept. So I wanted you to share that with everyone. Well, a little bit of it is, and you know, uh, Ken Mills of Mills Fence, um, I've heard him say it multiple times and, and he's been a, um, a guy that I've listened to for the last 12 years uh, that I've been a part of this group. And we, I heard him say a long time ago that we can figure it out. He, he just has the philosophy, we can figure it out. Now, he always did have the caveat that you have to bid it so you have a little bit of room in there and, 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 and do things. But he, he just never said no to a job. Mm -hmm. um, now, he didn't win all of them. But, uh, and he started out as a baker in his 20s. And now he has a very, very, the Mills Fence is a, an extremely successful sure. fence company. Yeah. And I, I really admire what he's done and how he's grown his family and how his family's worked for it and kind of been a role model for, for me in the last 10 to 12 years. Yeah. But he said that we, we, we just say yes. We say we'll figure it out. Saying yes does not mean it's going to be easy. Saying yes does not mean you're going to make a ton of money. Saying yes is probably going to stretch you a little bit, but it could give you an opportunity at something that you had no idea you were really good at. Mm -hmm. Saying yes has been wonderful for us. And I, I get it. A lot of people out there are teaching fence companies saying, hey, just do what you're good at. Do what you're fast, repeatable, do what you're good at. But if you don't get out of your comfort zone once in a while, you're not going to scale. Yeah you're going to be that size of company forever. I was telling you, we're doing a, a job right now that it, it's literally footings for a solar farm. Mm -hmm. When my team came to me, they're like, hey, do you want to look at this? And I was like, well, what, what is it? Well, we're going to dig a hole. We're going to drop in a rebar cage and we're going to put concrete in there and strike it off. Why wouldn't we look at that? Yeah. And there's no other fence companies looking at it. Matter of fact, nobody wants to look at it because all the footing guys want to go just do footings. <laughs> we were the only right. person looking at it. Yeah. Now that's fun when you get to go find a job like that. Yeah. So say yes. Yeah. Let's figure it out. Let's go do it. And and we've had a lot of success at that. You know, doing the netting, doing the sports stuff, just trying to figure out how to find our niche and what we're good at. And that goes all the way down to your team too, because you were telling me um, earlier a story about Scott. That there's even verticals that you're getting into that you didn't even know. <laughs> so, I, so I was visiting with a friend in the grocery store, and they came up to me and right there in Waverly. They said, "Hey, that's awesome that you guys are doing decks now." And I'm like, "Oh," and I, I thought I misheard him. But I said, "Oh, you're doing decks?" <laughs> He's like, "No, you're doing decks." <laughs> so, so I was like, "I don't think uh, we're yeah. doing decks." Then I found out that Scott, one of our guys that we have was a home builder, loves building decks. We put some young people with him. He's an old skilled tradesman, has built homes most of his life. Mm. Now Scott implemented building decks. And yeah. we, I think we just finished our first one and, and um, awesome. apparently it went good. But, but a little bit of that is we had the right guy. Yep. We had the right attitude and we have the resources yeah. to do it. So yeah. it, was, it was good for us. That doesn't mean we're going to go oh, take over the deck world. By right, means. right. But, you know, I was, the, I was mentioned that um, about a month or two ago on the podcast was I think so often as I'm meeting more and more entrepreneurs, especially in construction that have, sca have scaled, I, it feels like very often to me that the, the real success in some of those spots is because you have that person that can take you to the next level, Yeah, that can move the ball in a different direction, that brings something unique to the table. Like it's the people resource part of it that... We would not have an access control division if it wasn't for Sean Owsley. Yeah. It would not happen. We've done them and Scott did them for a while. Scott's very good at it, mm -hmm. but he runs our travel commercial 
division. So, and that's a very successful division. Um, a couple things I have learned in business, business 101, is you don't ever take one of your key guys and pull them out of a successful division and have them go work on something new. And that just doesn't work. What will happen is, is, is your success rate over here will more likely fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and it does. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done it. I, I, I made the mistake one time. Scott Kleinbeck is our utility guy. He's he's extremely talented, extremely smart, extremely patient, and he's incredible at what he does. So I took him out and I said, hey, you need to go fix this problem. Go over here and fix this, this fab shop. Well, what happened was his division suffered and he struggled getting this, so he got aggravated and he wanted to, he wanted to win at both. I had to pull him out. Yeah. Put him back over here and say, okay, we got to, you, you're rocking it over here. You got to rock it over here. And plus, Scott's better at the overall operations of our company. And yeah, he's good at just looking. Him and I have been together for so long that we've sure. been doing this so long. He's good at, so don't pull your key guy off of something successful and go try to start something new. It just, it might work. There's, there's one-offs, but it's risky, very risky. How do you know, like, how do you measure that with your team like when you find a spot where you think they're going to fit or you know that they're working better but they don't want to be in that space like i've seen that happen before where you know someone wants to do something different maybe because they think the opportunity is better but they're really yoked for this task and this manage this part of the business like what do you what do you think when that that is extremely difficult because you, the one thing you can't have is you can't have a manager or somebody running a division for you that is unhappy it, it sure. just doesn't work because people will read off of that they'll feed off that they'll read it they'll they'll all of a sudden now you'll have an entire team that is trying to be positive yeah but yet they're unhappy right so you really got to find the niche, you know, and that's what I was saying with Sean Owsley with the, with the access control, he wanted it. He came to us and said, I want to go get trained on that. I find that interesting. I want to do it. He went down to Dallas. He took the training. We, we paid for it. He came back all jazzed up, excited. Now we have an access control, you know, awesome. he, and, and he's got a couple guys working underneath him and they're traveling all over Nebraska doing access control. That's so great. But he was passionate about yep. it. So yep. then just let the horse run. Yep. And hopefully he's not running for the whip. He's running for the rider. Running for the rider. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Wrap that back around. So um, what, let's wrap this thing up. Put a bow on. What, what closing thought do you want to leave everybody with, buddy? I mean, you got a lot of thoughts. Going yeah. Around, so. <laughs> lately, lately I've, been, I've been doing a lot of research uh, on the culture aspect of mentors and um, having somebody. Um, there was a study done, uh, that I can't remember the number, like 80% of the companies fail in the first five years. Yeah. Right. And of those that make it 80% of them fail before 10 years. Wow. Um, but, but there was a study done that said an incredible amount, like 97% of all the companies that did make it had a mentor or somebody to call whenever they needed help. And I think that's. That's that, that boost of energy that you have. That's that friend that you text, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. I've got probably seven or eight people um, that I get texts from Mm -hmm. Uh, this morning. I got a text from Dan Blanc that said, Hey, I miss you. Um, I'm down so many pounds. He's, you know, he's, he's he's trying to get, uh, back in shape. And, uh, he's telling me, you know, to have that person that you can text to tell something personal or private or just bounce an idea off to is so important. And, and I think you have to find that person in life and you have to find that group. And sometimes, you know, for instance, Randy Ward, mm-hmm. incredible human. I don't talk to him a lot. Probably every third or fourth month, mm-hmm. he'll give me a call. Or I'll give him a call. But when we do it, so valuable, mm-hmm. you know, it's so incredibly powerful. And it just, he can make you feel like a rock star. You know, sure. he just is such a positive energy guy and a, a strong faith-based human that yeah. he'll, 
He'll give me words of encouragement that I'm ready to just take over the yeah. world, you know. Matt, and, you're such a stud. Yeah, yeah. You're doing so, I'm <laughs> you're so proud of so, you. I'm so proud you of know? you, bud. Yeah, when Randy says that, you're like, oh <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Exactly. It's, it's like your dad calling you, exactly. giving you a pat on. So, but, but you know, I've got those people, uh, you know, Sean King and I, once in a while, three or four in the morning, I'll get a text from him. Hey, you know, let's, let's get after it today. It's going to be a great day. Um, you know, Cannon Johnson, all those all my friends in the industry, we we bounce stuff off. And what they don't even understand is that I need their feedback just as much mm -hmm. as they need mine. So yeah. that's kind of been my thing lately is like find it. a mentor, find a friend um, that you can share intimate things with. And you can, when you're hurting, you know, that's us men, we hide so much. Yeah. We don't want anybody to know when we're hurting inside. You got to find that one person that says, man, I'm, I'm having a rough day. Yeah. And, you know, I need, I need, I need a, a kick in the pants. If you got that guy, and you can surround yourself with good, and that's this week we've we've been doing that. Yeah. I, these are my friends I've been friends with for you know twelve, thirteen years, and and I've gotten to know them really well. They're my mentors. They're the ones helping me do what I do. Yeah. So I don't know that's if that's awesome. a final thought that's or not. Or fantastic. Or not. I, I love it. I you know as you were saying that I was thinking you know construction's so funny because I feel like we have you can have the highest highs mm. and the lowest lows. You know, like it's such a broad spectrum of feelings and like the day-to-day -day grind and what we do. But I'll tell you this, here's a word, word of encouragement. Um, the construction industry is losing people left and right and they're not getting back in it mm. because it is tough right now. True. And I believe that we are in one of the tougher eras of construction it's going to get better and the fruits of our labor is going to pay off because less and less people are doing it. We, we, more and more people are retiring and, and more new people are not getting into construction. True. And I hate to tell you this, but construction is one of those things that we all need. Right. We all need things built. Um, that's how we keep moving as a society. So I believe for, if there's a word of encouragement for all the young people out there that are that you just feel like you're beating your head against the wall and you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. This is hard work. I'm telling you, it will pay off. Good, good. Keep grinding. That's what Matt Warner says. Just keep on grinding. So <laughs> Matt, appreciate you having on today Absolutely. again. And we will see you guys on the next episode. You've been listening to the Protecting Your Radius podcast from the LuxCore Studios in Bixby, Oklahoma. Thanks for sticking around. And connect with us and all of our partners at www.protectingyourradius.com. We want to thank our premier partners. LuxCore, the newest line of premium quality composite infill to slide into your fence track fence system. Frame your style today. Also, Stain Track, the world's first patented standalone stain machine. Utilizing flood coat technology, Stain Track covers boards, pickets, posts, and any type of dimensional wood you can think of. And what better way to use your stain track machine than to use the easy application Wood Defender family of stains. Wood Defender goes on easy and covers in one coat with no back brushing. And of course, the true power of our show is you, the listener. Please rate and review our show on whatever platform you consume this content. Your five-star likes and reviews help other contractors get the message that we all want to be better and do better. And in the construction world, we can never forget that before you can be great, you've got to be good. Before you can be good, you've got to be bad. But before you can even be bad, you've got to try.